On today's Question of Faith, where can I take my daughter on retreat? Hey everybody, this is Question of Faith. I am Mike Hayes. I am the Young Adult Ministry Director here in the Diocese of Cleveland. And I'm Father Damien Ferentz, the Vicar for Evangelization. And I'm Maria Wancata, Marriage and Family Ministry Specialist. And I'm Lindsay Fullerman, the coach and founder of Fit From Faith. And I am Desi Gould, the Director of Evangelization uh, for the Avon Catholic Community. Five in the booth. Wow. And <laughs> Well, Maria's a regular here, but Lindsay's, <laughs> Lindsay's back and... Uh, and um, Desi's, Desi's back. back. Yeah. Why did I, I wanted to call you Maria because I was thinking of your daughter for some reason. But huh? there's I was Maria. Right? To be a Maria. Really? That's why Maria's Maria. Well, you have Maria, Joseph, and up. Leo. Yeah. So <laughs> I said Maria, and then I'm like, Maria Gould is your daughter, Desi. Anyway. Well, we're going to talk about daughters anyway. So Let's go. Fun. Let's go. I'm ready. I have cobwebs in my throat. Oh, well. That's Do you need water? Nope. They they say I'm you allergic. Eat, they, they say that you have eaten like a number of spiders in your sleep all on, all like your whole life, which is just disgusting. Mm. I have heard that. Yeah, it's nasty. <laughs> I, I freak my wife out every time I say that. She goes, "Will you stop saying that?" <laughs> but anyway, we <laughs> now we freaked out all our listeners. <laughs> it's okay. And it's us right. too. Uh, <laughs> back to daughters. <laughs> just <laughs> back to daughters. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here because we're going to talk about a retreat that you guys have all planned uh, called Behold, right? Yes. So it's the Behold Retreat. It is, um, honestly, it's something that's been on my heart for many, many years. And once I got into my role in the marriage and family ministry office, I was introduced to Desi and then Lindsay, and I pitched this idea to them. And... I think we all fell in love with it, but we prayed over it. So we didn't know what it was going to be in the first couple months. And then over time, I think we all kind of just had this, this passage from Luke kept coming into my, my head. And once I shared it with Desi and Lindsay, it was like, behold. Yeah. Mm. In the spirit of Mary's fiat, we wanted to do something for mothers and daughters, um, really geared towards teenagers, young adults, like this time in your life where you're seeking independence, you're trying to find who you are, but you still you still need your mom. And so this is a time to get away from the busyness of life, sports, clubs, everything else that you're involved in, and just focus on that relationship um, with your physical mother, but also your spiritual mother. It's awesome. When you, when you were talking, even before you mentioned Luke, I was thinking this is a very marian process to come about figuring out how to do a retreat you're with other good catholic women you're open to the spirit you don't know exactly where it's going but you've got enough information to take the next step forward in faith yeah that's awesome cool and so how did you guys get involved and like, you, know, you guys all talked about it but what parts are you playing in this retreat yeah no i think we all got involved like maria said just through her connecting with us and uh, reaching out and i think um collectively, right, she saw something in us that she knew would be an asset uh, to really make this day successful. Um, and so Desi and I both have speaking parts, uh, breakout sessions. Um, you want to share a little bit about what yours is about? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, we had, a, Maria and I had a mutual friend introduce us, and it was amazing. Friend of the show, Brooke. Yes, Brooke. <laughs> oh, Shout out Brooke. to Brooke. <laughs> and, um, She's crying now. She's she... driving in her car. <laughs> She knew that I had a heart for, especially when it came to theology of the body, um, uh, feminine genius, and really like this sense of like our identity and understanding like our creator and our goodness and our beauty as women. And so um, something that I just really was looking for ways to uh, to use this, this passion and this desire and like bring it to others, right? Um, I think for many people, like, there's not always the traditional mother-daughter relationship either. So we look at aunts, um, grandparents, our spiritual mothers, our sisters, our religious, right? And we just, like, we see them and, like, the role they serve in really helping us encounter our beauty, our, our creator, you know, things just like that. So for me, um, that connection um, with Maria was just we knew right away like I wanted to be a part of this project I'm like I'm in just I'm sold whatever you need I'm here <laughs> actually the more I think about it Maria Damien Father Damien uh, is the one who introduced the two of us 
uh, just through word of mouth. Uh, he always referred you as the the fitness girl in the office, the one who loved Orange <laughs> Theory. So I knew yeah, he yeah. would hit it off right away. There's this weird um, woman who wakes up at 4:30 in the morning and yeah, does Orange that Theory. You, got, her. you guys got to meet each other. You'll hit it off. But um, yeah. but I am really excited about this retreat. The ability to really speak on uh, behold uh, the fierceness of your spirit. Um, I think sometimes just as women we can be sort of cut off uh from what our hearts uh being from our hearts being like in union with the lord and really tuning into what he's asking of us um so i'm really excited to speak on uh, the spiritual aspect of what it means to be a woman and how do we tune into that and actually live that out um, with strength and authority um, especially in a culture where it's just we're so inundated um with what we're told we're supposed to be mm. uh, so really helping women and young women to understand the truth of who they are with this gift of uh, their, their spirit. Yeah, so kind of to, to sum it up, there's, there's three, three focus talks for the retreat. So we wanted to make sure that the retreat um, touched on all aspects of the human person. So mind, body, and spirit. Lindsay will focus on spirit. Desi will focus on mind, and then we're bringing in a keynote speaker, Samantha Kelly, who founded Fierce Athlete. She's a D1, former D1 soccer player. Mm. Um, she fell in love with theology of the body. She has a master's in Catholic psychology, um, and she runs this ministry specifically for women, but in knowing their identity and knowing that post your athletic career or whatever you're into as a young woman, young adult, you are first and foremost a daughter of God. Mm -hmm. And she has like these different talks that that just focus on all of that, but she'll focus on the body aspect. And I mean, I think something that Desi, Lindsay, and I all kind of bonded over was we wish we had something like this to do with our moms when we were Mm -hmm. younger. Um, And there's just a lot of, in the secular culture, ways that young women are raised to maybe hate femininity or want to suppress who they are as women, comparing themselves to men. But the whole spirit of this is to look at it from the Catholic lens, the Catholic worldview that femininity is beautiful and there's a truth in that and to see the goodness of it. Um, And as much as you're growing up and becoming your own woman, look to the model of of your mother and strengthen that relationship with your mother. And then also your spiritual mother, Mary, who will always guide you to to Jesus, to, you know, to Jesus through Mary. Mm -hmm. When you talk about femininity too, sometimes people will think, well, I don't, I don't feel that feminine or that, that doesn't resonate with me. But you've, you've witnessed when we gave our Ken and Barbie talk that growing up, you really enjoyed sports and playing more with the boys, but you did so as a young, as a girl or a young woman. And now as a woman, that's femininity too. So there isn't just one box that femininity fits into. It's being the woman that God has called you to be and, and rejoicing in the fact that you are a woman, but that doesn't put you in like the Barbie box. Right. Right. And then with, um, with this, I mean, we hope to do this annually. So with Sam and her ministry, Fierce Athlete, it's going to be like, what is that fierceness of our mind, body, and spirit? And then, you know, next year, as we decide on maybe who our keynote speaker is, it'll have a different theme. So this year is Behold Our Fierceness. fierceness. Next year, maybe it's, you know, Behold Something Else. Mm. Well, that's a good idea, yeah. What is the... Uh what is the the age parameter for this in terms of the moms and daughters? Is it, is it, We're is just there saying a, is thirteen and up. Oh, thirteen like, and up. If okay. If you want, if we want, if you want to bring your whole generations, we have grandma, mom, Jeez. and daughter. You know, goddaughter, um, and godmother, aunt, um, spiritual mothers too. Like we're doing this at Our Lady of Lords Shrine that's run by the Trinitarian Sisters, who I was educated by the Trinitarian Sisters at St. Rocco. So oh, right. Sister yeah. Phyllis Sand was my principal. Sister Ursula still there, who was my second grade teacher. Mm-hmm. Sister Josephine taught PSR um, for my kids when they went through First Communion. Her voice is in the promo video. Wow. <laughs> she, um, so we will have a spiritual mother presence there with the religious sisters, too. And it's an all-day thing, right? 10 to 4. 10 to 4. With mass um, in the chapel at four, it'll be the vigil with um, Father Mick Joyce. Mm. Oh, he's, oh great. he's great! Great capuchin. 
So if your mother is deceased and your godmother can make it, is that that's mm-hmm. permitted? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Um, or you don't have your own biological children, but you could bring your goddaughter? Right. That's yes. Awesome. Um, we know that motherhood comes in all different shapes and forms. So um, even campus ministers, if there's a, oh. a, a daughter or youth minister in your, in your group that you know she'd want to come to this, bring her. Or if you're a young woman and you have an adult that you'd want to go to with this, invite them. So make that personal invitation. I love that it's intergenerational. I think that's so important. So although it's important to do things with your own peers, the church is all of us. And so it's good to have the different generations learning from each other too. So Lindsay, we're going to work out on this on this retreat not on this one no, we're, we're going to okay. exercise the heart muscle mm, and learn nice. to get that strong <laughs> but i do think i'm so excited for it because the whole goal when we were talking about this was to really create dialogue and foster conversation between mother and daughter um i grew up in a home where i didn't really talk to my parents mm, about anything yeah. right it was more of a stoic who would suppress every emotion and just kind of kept everything in So we're hoping that through this, uh, moms and daughters will at least be able, it'll be a catalyst to uh, really create and spark good, healthy discussion, you know, around the dinner table or driving in the car to sports, Uh, just really hoping to, you know, influence and change culture, you know, one little retreat at a time. Yeah. 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 We grew up similar. My mother wouldn't say anything. I remember I went on a big retreat in college. My mother was asked to to write me mm-hmm. for the for the retreat, and I came home, you know, in tears of this letter that I, this heartfelt letter I got from my mom. And my mom was like, "You, mean, you really like this stuff?" Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah." And so it, and it kind of inspired her to kind of get back in touch with her. Mm-hmm. Not that she was ever really far from her faith, but it kind of you know gave her a little mm-hmm. kickstart to say, "Oh, maybe I should be looking things a little more seriously." So. I think, too, depending upon your family of origin, people do express their love and affection in different ways. Yeah. So I was going to ask, I, well, you don't have to answer this. Maybe there's some, pre- some surprises on the retreat, but are, maybe there's some writing or journaling exercises. Because some people have a hard time expressing their emotion or affection yes. just talking with someone. But in writing, you can really get that all out and think about it. I still have the notes my mom and dad wrote to me when I made my confirmation retreat in eighth grade. I, they've meant mm-hmm. the world to me. Um, and I still, to this day, I think I express my, my heart better in writing than I do in speaking. And I think I'm a you know, decent preacher and all, but um, if you really want to know what I think, read what I write. Mm. I think sometimes just as a culture, we get very disconnected from our emotions. You know, we we aren't connected to our hearts. And so I think before we can even get people to write, it's getting them to actually know what they feel. Feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you don't know what you feel, you're not going to be able to write. Right. You know, you're not going to really understand as it's like you're spitting it out. So I like to first start at least this retreat, helping people to get in touch with what am I actually like feeling? right at the heart level and then perhaps you know journaling that out right and well and journaling helps you understand what you're feeling and thinking sometimes too it's like someone's asked me like what do you i don't know but then when you have quiet and you have time to reflect Mm. oh why maybe this is right you know so that's that's all very important stuff at our young adult retreats that's been really true where people we give people quiet time after every talk and they say it's so important for me to be able to write everything down before I get into a small group to talk with others. Yeah, and it's sort of an, an introvert-extrovert thing, right? Like the yeah. extroverts can't wait to talk, and sometimes it's a little harder for them to kind of sit back and, and write. But the introverts really need that time, so we got to balance it on that mm-hmm. end to make sure that they're taken care of, yeah. Yeah, and as you can chime in, but the, the grounds there at the at the shrine yeah. are, are perfect for this, yeah. that yeah. to have the time. Hopefully the weather, um, it's not rainy or anything that day, that they can walk around and – um, taken time. So, you know, I, I internalize, I need to process things before I can either write or, or, or speak them. So we want to make sure we, we give everyone the, the time for that. And the talks will hopefully touch mother and daughter that they, they can share, like, this is what I took away from it, or this is what I took away from it. And then, and then just talk it out. What is the day and time again yes. for the retreat? March 2nd, Saturday, March 2nd. We wanted to get it as close to the Feast of the Annunciation as we could, and that's the date that, that worked for everyone logistically. Mm-hmm. Nice. And it's 10 to 4. 10 to 4. Lord Trenton, how do you sign up? 
dioceseofcleveland.org slash behold. And we'll throw all that in the show notes along with a really cool video you guys did. So that's really Yeah, nice. the video is awesome. It's beautiful. Was well done. Yes. Yes, we wanted to make sure that everything marketing wise um, was beautiful. Um, mm. And so hopefully it shows you the, the quality of retreat that you will be experiencing. And this is a, f- a first. It's a first. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is and I, I, this is what I love. I love the collaboration with the diocese and other entities within the diocese, you know, Fit from Faith and Avon Catholic, not to mention the, the sisters over at Lord's mm-hmm. Shrine. It's, this, is, this is exactly what Bishop Molesic has asked us to do, to avoid the siloing and work mm-hmm. together and, and combine our, our gifts and our, and our strengths to serve the church. So thank you all for doing this. This would not be possible without the collaboration of Desi and Lindsay, even Peter, who did the videography, the oh, yeah. sisters' willingness to just open up their shrine and their support. Um, yes. It so takes great. a village. Absolutely. So again, beholds, dioceseofcleveland.org slash beholds. Hold on, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I know that the next thing you're going to do is the church search. Is that true? I was going to say the date again. But oh, yeah, sure. okay. No, go, go, go. Because I just had, I had a spontaneous idea that I think the Holy Spirit gave me. Of course on. you do. March 2nd from <laughs> 10 to does. 4. <laughs> March 2nd from 10 to 4, behold retreat. A scathingly brilliant idea. We were going to talk about a particular parish, but since this retreat's at Lord's Shrine. Sure. Maybe we could talk a little bit about Yeah, Lord that's Shrine? great. Yeah. Okay. Go so in Euclid, if you've never been to Euclid, Ohio, you may see all the windmills there and there's the train tracks and there's a lot of industry, but there's also some residential areas. And right along Euclid Avenue, there's this whole, I don't know how many acres they have, but the Sisters of the Holy Trinity have a beautiful chapel there, a space where they also serve pancakes and breakfast on Sundays. Uh, wooded Stations of the Cross, and an, actually an outdoor shrine where Mass is regularly celebrated outdoor. It's one of the only places in the right. diocese where that happens with regularity. So if you've never been there, um, that retreat day is a good day to go. But they also have Mass every every Sunday at 8.30, and then during the summer months, I think it's also at 9.30 or so. Maybe it's 8 and 9.30. We'll have to you know put that in the show notes. But it's a great place to visit, or even if you're like, I just need to get away for a little bit. Go to the shrine, you know, sit in the chapel or go to the grotto. Um, it's a beautiful place to be. And I, I hope I didn't interrupt your plan, but no, I you're felt fine. like the Holy Ghost That's fine. was nudging me. <laughs> we could talk about other churches all the time. Yeah. Lord's Shrine is great. Yeah. And, and an easy drive. Like for wherever you are in the diocese, it's an easy drive to get there. So. Mm-hmm. And they just repaved Euclid Avenue basically yes. from where the seminary is all the way down. I know because I used to live at the seminary and seminary professors cover masses there. So it used to be like, you know, driving through, uh, 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 well, there were a lot of potholes and now there's not. (laughs) (laughs) So let's take a look at our readings for this coming week. Uh, We're in the gospel of Mark. When it was evening after sunset, they brought him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Second week in a row, we hear about him uh, driving out demons. Indeed. I preached this past weekend about the fact that demons are fallen angels, and since they were created by God, they recognize God, and recognize God has more power over them than than anybody. So there's nothing to be afraid of because Jesus is God. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, he has the power to help you. So don't despair. That was was my takeaway. How about you ladies? Well, for me, I think one of the ways actually that I've been preparing for Behold has been reading a lot of St. Teresa of Avila. And so right now she's just like radiating on my heart. Um, So every time I read anything about demons, like I feel like my instant reaction is just like the Lord will prepare me, prepare my heart, like, and trusting in him and knowing like that's how I fight the battle. Like the only way to do the battle is with him. And recognizing that we're living in that battle, you know, um, every single day. And so we have to be on guard and know how to, like, fight against that. It's not right. The story is not just something we hear about in Scripture, but it actually happened. And so how, are, how do we uh, – are we aware of the demons in our own lives mm-hmm. and how 
we're coming up against them every single day. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's so important to recognize that. That's what I reflected on last week, too, um, at Sagrada Familia. And I said, huh. you know, the power that Jesus has is more powerful than any of our demons, than anything that could, mm. demons also divide us, right? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Satan's a great divider. And so, you know, if we have, we think we have divisions among us, you know, I'm, I'm in a parish now for my field ed where I don't even speak the same language that the people speak there. And so I say, you know, but our divisions aren't what unite us. It's our faith in Christ that unite us. So everybody feels comfortable together. And I've, I said, they've taught me how to be a Christian by, by, in, by inviting me into their mm -hmm. space and including mm -hmm. me. So it's been great. I'll say the, the lines that uh, stood out to me were rising very early before dawn, he mm. left and went off, went off to a deserted place where he prayed. But then. <laughs> Sounds like you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then stretched. But um, <laughs> yeah, he needed that, that, that time in prayer to settle, recenter himself, listen, listen to how the father was directing him. But then right away. Simon pursued him. Everyone's looking for you. We need you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think as mothers and just busy people in, in ministry, like we're always being pursued. We're always being asked asked to do more. But you need that 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 time away in prayer. Mm -hmm. There's an interview recently where the fourth season of The Chosen is getting set to be released in oh. theaters, and they're saying that in this series, Jesus seems very distressed and kind mm. of and kind of exhausted almost the whole time. They mm. that it's, it's, that's sort of the motif, and I was thinking about that here, is that you know, everybody's calling on him now, and yeah. he gets distressed. Yeah. It also can be how demons can tempt us, too. Like, hey, you've got so much work to do. You, just, you don't need to pray right now. Your work is your prayer, mm. and then before you know it, you're in trouble. Yep. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. All right, so Behold Retreat. We'll give out the date again. March 2nd, 10 to 4, Lord Shrine. Maria, Lindsay, Desi, thanks for joining us. Thank you Thank for you. having us. We'll have this and a whole lot more next time here on Question of Faith.